Africa's first internationally infamous beauty queen is at the center of this sad but fascinating story. A woman reduced to being an animal attraction at a circus, subjected to the curiosity of Westerners and exploited by her owner, captured in images as an object of ridicule and dehumanized by her captors, she became emblematic of the black African woman. This is the story of Sarah Badman. Her early years. Sarah Badman or Sajje was a Khoisa woman from South Africa. By her teenage years, Badman married a Khoi Khoi man who was a drummer. They had a child together who died shortly after birth. When Badman was 16, her husband was murdered by Dutch colonies. Soon after, Sarah became the property of Caesar, who would then set a future tragic timeline of her life. You are about to witness a truly remarkable phenomenon. A female savage from the dark continent Africa. Initially, she was shipped off to Cape Town as a servant, but things were soon to change. On October 29, 1810, although she could not read, 21-year-old Batman supposedly signed a contract with William Dunlop, a physician who was a friend of the Caesar brothers. This contract required her to travel with the Caesar brothers and Dunlop to England and Ireland, where she would work as a domestic servant, since technically slavery had been abolished in Great Britain. Additionally, she would be exhibited for entertainment purposes. The contract stated that Batman would receive a portion of earnings from her exhibitions and would be allowed to return to South Africa after five years. However, the contract was false, and her enslavement continued for the remainder of her life. The Making of Hot in Tat Venice Adios. When Sarah arrived in Cape Town, indigenous women were considered abnormal, inferior, and paradoxically, exotically desirable to Europeans. You know those styles of clothes that English women wore with the big round behind? That was an attempt to emulate this African butt. That is a thing of beauty. And while Sarah was carried around, displayed and treated like some kind of freak. Others were trying to copy that look. Sarah, with her unique characteristics, soon found herself the focus of curious attention. Her distinctive looks intrigued the eyes of William Dunlop, a surgeon who made a deal with Caesar to take over ownership of Batman. Dunlop put Sarah on display in London as a primitive and extraordinary phenomenon of nature. He made her go naked to anyone who was willing to pay a shilling. The rich would pay higher prices in order to touch her at places unimaginable. Her large back, in particular, was their point of interest. Curiosity turns to perversity. Remember how the contrast stated that she will receive a portion of the entertainment earnings and be allowed to return to South Africa after five years? Well, that never happened. She was put on display as an auditor in London. May I see the document with Lord Caledon's signature? No. I am under no obligation to show it to you, and I am under no obligation to answer any more of your questions. This is a place of work, gentlemen, and as such, we have work. Sarah was then taken to France and sold to an animal handler. Here, her exploitation and degradation intensified as she was led around and given instructions like an animal, while her female genitalia was studied like she was some sort of lab rat. It is also believed that during this time, she fell or was forced into prostitution and became a heavy drinker. The story blurs. During her time in France, historical documentation on Sarah's life becomes conflicting. While some claim she was given the option of being set free and returning home, others believe that she was coerced into continuing her role as Hottentag Venice. When the African Association heard about Sarah Bartman and how she was being treated and what was happening with her, they decided to take the case to court. The evidence that they were presented with suggested that she wasn't being treated well, she wasn't being paid well, and she didn't even understand the terms of her contract. But when they questioned her, she testified in William's favor, stating that she wasn't being forced to do the work and that she was there on her own free will. My lievest mistress in the obfurant me, spill. In real life, I'm not the person I am on stage. I'm acting. <laughs> It could be argued that by this stage, Sarah had lost all self-respect and hope and had, in a sense, given up on life. Some reports claim she enjoyed the attention and company of French high society, while some believe she was used as nothing more than a prostitute and object of sexual interest. A twist in pop 
popular perception. Europeans at the time saw Africans as an oversexed, primal, lesser race, representing the link between animals and humans and the lowest form of human development. According to reports, however, Sarah was multilingual and due to the diverse cultures she had experienced, she could speak fluently her own native language in addition to French, Dutch and English. French naturalist George Javier, who had an intense interest in Sarah, described her as intelligent with an excellent memory for faces. Ironically, he was also of the opinion that she had ape-like traits and compared her to an orangutan and monkey. Sarah's Sarah finally gave up her ghost at the age of 26 from an inflammatory disease that was believed to be related to syphilis, alcoholism, smallpox and pneumonia. But sadly, her freak show never ended. Although Javier did not perform an autopsy on Batman, he did make a plaster cast of her body before dissecting it. Javier's dissection of Batman helped shape European science with Batman and other African women thought of as savage and distinct from the civilized females of Europe. Sarah's final freak show. After Javier had dissected Sarah's body, he pickled her brain and genitalia and placed them in jars on display at Mosel de Lhomme in Paris. There they remained for over a century until 1974. As proof of Javier's theory of racial evolution, her organs, genitalia, and buttocks were thought to be evidence of a sexual primitivism and intellectual equality with that of an orangutan. The struggle to get Sarah home. Following South Africa's first free and democratic elections, then President Nelson Mandela requested that Sarah's remains be returned home. Not undo the damage that was done to her. But at least we can summon the courage to speak the naked but healing truth that must comfort her wherever she may be. After much legal wrangling and debate within the French National Assembly, France accepted the request on March 6, 2002, and Sarah's remains were repatriated to her homeland in the Gamtus Valley, South Africa. Sarah's impact on South Africa. Sarah is the first documented Khoisan to arrive in Europe, and although much of her story has been lost over the years, she has come to be seen as the epitome of colonial exploitation, racism, and commodification of black people. Several books have been published about treatment and cultural significance. She has become the landscape upon which multiple narratives of exploitation and suffering within black womanhood have been enacted. Yet amid all of this, the black woman remains invisible. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. Stay beautiful, stay safe, peace.